Hello, I am Jeremy, and today I'm going to be taking a look at a simple roll and write game by the name of Blocks. Uh, this is a game, it plays from two to four players. The box actually says ages fi six and up in about 15 minutes. I, that's probably actually pretty accurate. You could, it's not a complicated game by any means. Maybe it could take 10 to 15 minutes depending on your, your players. Um, and this is a roll and write game inspired by the video game classic Tetris. It's been designed by uh, Klaus Jürgen Reed, uh, who is the designer of Carcassonne. Uh, and it's put out in a bilingual edition by Norris Spiel. I had to import my copy from Germany, but it does have English rules in the box. It's a very simple game, and it uh, will only take a few minutes for me to show you how the game plays. Then I'll come back and give you some thoughts on the game. So in the game blocks, you're not going to get much in your box. You're simply going to get two of these custom dice, which show various Tetris shapes on them. Um, each one of those is different than the other as well as a block of these uh, score pad, or a score pad with these uh, score sheets. I should note these are only single-sided. You do get a lot of them. What I did was I just laminated four of those. The game does play from two to four players, so just so I wouldn't run out of that pad. Um, and the score pads are going to look much like, if you've ever played the video game Tetris, a grid for that game. They have a little bit of scoring detail at the bottom. It's essentially a grid here where you're going to be filling in those Tetris shapes as they drop down on your play field. And you'll notice that certain rows are colored and certain spaces have numbers on them from 2 to 4. So on your turn, and you're going to take turns being the active player, you, you'll either fill in a grid as the act fill in a shape on your grid as the active or the inactive player. On your turn, let's say I'm the active player, I will roll these dice, and then I could choose to place one of these two shapes onto my grid. And I could freely rotate this however I want. So I could do, you know, if, if I have this shape, I could do it this way, this way, this way. And it, let's say I even had this one, I could freely, f like, mirror this. So I could basically do this configuration of four with this space here over here instead. So you could freely rotate it, mirror it, as long as you keep the same basic configuration. Um, but let's just say I chose to take this one here. I would choose a place where I want to drop it down and then slide it all the way down to the bottom, much as if you were playing the, te the game Tetris. So I would do an X, 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 and an O, and you can see that's what's on that die. And what you're trying to do as you're placing these down ideally is to a lot, to both complete rows you'll basically lose points for any empty spaces that are left on the grid here at the end of the game and then you're trying to align these pieces so that the circles circle those numbers because that will you'll get bonus points for doing that um, now after I did that as the active player I would essentially set this die aside and then the other players at the table could either choose this one and they could fill in that square shape that I just picked. However, they would not get a circle, so they would just fill in four X's in that configuration. Or they could choose the other die, which I did not select, and they would get access to that circle if they picked that one. And then after I, everybody has done that, the next player in turn order will roll. They'll be the active player. They'll pick one, so maybe they pick this one. And then I would have that same choice. So I could either pick the one they did not select with the circle or the one that they did select without the circle. So maybe I would take this one, which you could see is three in a row. However, I would simply need to do X, X, X in a row instead of uh, with the circle in the middle. So this is going to keep going with players, uh, you know, rolling the dice, drafting one of them, and then other players picking one of the two dice. And certain things will happen as this uh, grid fills up. The first thing that could happen is that a player on a roll of the dice might complete one of these colored rows. If they do that, they simply announce that they've done it, and then they'll circle the four on the bottom of their score sheet. So you can see here there's a four and a two. So if I was the first person to do it, or if I was you know did it on the same roll as the first person to do it, I would circle the four, and that would be bonus points for completing all of the blocks in the green row. And there's one of those for each of those four rows. If, you know, I was lagging behind and I simply did that later than the other players on a subsequent turn, I would instead circle at the bottom the uh, two. So pretty simple with that. And then um, the game will, like I said, just keep going with players taking turns being the active player and rolling, filling in blocks until um, when the dice are rolled, two players are simply not able to fill in a square. So like I have a semi-complete sheet here. So if this was a situation um, at the end of the game and these were the two dice that were rolled, um, I would have you know these two shapes here. 
I would not be able to fill those in. I only have at the start of, or at the top of my uh, grid, these two spaces here. So neither of those would fit into that space. Um, if two players on a single roll of the dice have that situation happen where they can't fit in the shape, either of the shapes that have been rolled, then the game would immediately end after that round. I should note, as you're slide, slotting these uh, markers into your, your grid, uh, you are not allowed, unlike the video game Tetris, to slide them over. Um, so, for example, um, if I was back on this one and I drafted this shape here, let me show you that, and I brought it down here, one, circle, X, X, like that, I would never be able to fill in that bottom space. I, you know, if you leave, or if, you know, you did something like this, you did an X, X, O, X here, none of these spaces here would ever be able to be filled in because you're not allowed to slide something down and then over like in the video game. Only slide it straight down. Um, so at the end of the game, let's just say we had this situation here. The way you're going to score is you'll look at your bonus points for completing those colored rows. You will get minus one point for each of these spaces that you never filled in. So that would be one, two, three. And then you would tally up all the numbers that you've circled. So three, five, uh, 8, 10, 12, you know, um, 23, 5, uh, plus 11, so 36. So then you would just tally up your points, so I'd have 4, 8, 10, 12, my, uh, this is minus 3, I actually put these in the wrong situation, wrong order, so 4, 8, 10, 12, so 9, plus 36 is uh, 45, so that would be my final score if that's what I had. Whoever has the most points would be the winner. So that is blocks, and as I promised, the game is very simple at its core. If anybody you know has played Tetris, which I think is virtually everybody, um, they will immediately grok what is going on in this game. There have been a spate of, ga of games that you know try to adapt the video game Tetris into a board game format, and I feel that this is one of the more successful efforts. It's probably not my absolute favorite of those. Uh, the uh, game. Fits, which was designed by Reiner Knizia um, a few years back, maybe five or six years, maybe ten years back, uh, was probably my favorite game like that, uh, just because it had a lot of variety in it from round to round. You, you would have slight different scoring objectives, and it had a nice tactile feature. This, obviously, being a roll-and-write game, sacrifices that tactile nature of it. But what it does have going for it, which I think is terrific, is simplicity. Um, you should make no mistake about it. This is absolutely a filler game. 10 to 15 minutes of playing um, with maybe, you know, three minutes of rules explanation required to play the game. Uh, and that is actually a strength of it. A lot of games uh, that have come out, especially in the last year, there must have been a half dozen of these games that have tried to, you know, change Tetris into a roll and write game or a, a tile placement game. And this one is by far the most straightforward, but I think it's also the most successful of those. I'm thinking of games like Arial and uh, Bricks, and um, I'm sure I'm forgetting several others, but there were several others that have come out over the last few months. And this one is just so straightforward, so immediately graspable, that it doesn't get in the way of itself, like I think some of those other games do. Also, it's super quick. Players are just almost playing simultaneously. You're involved on every player's roll, hoping that they'll pick the die that you don't need, etc., which is, you know, perfect for this sort of, of game. The fact that it only plays four players um, might be a slight drawback. I, some of these roll and write games do play more and do so successfully, but it does have that race element that I think it makes it mandatory that it, it caps off the uh, number of players that are playing. So, um, in all, I think that if you like, you know, simple puzzle games, if you like roll and write games, this one is definitely on the simpler side, but um, it, uh, at the same time, works very well as a filler game, and I think that that's what it was going for, and so, by all means, I think it would be recommended. The box is somewhat large because of the size of the score pad, but I have to say that um, this was... Doing this video review was the uh, first time that I've pulled out this box in a few months. In the few months I've had the game, I just simply have taken those uh, laminated sheets and the dice and I've thrown them inside of other game boxes and uh, carted the game around that way. And it's been very successful at that, you know, as I'm waiting, you know, at a game meetup to play another game or whatever. It's a perfect game to whip out because it requires almost no explanation and you could be done with it lickety split. So, uh, good recommendation for Blocks, one of the most successful of this type of games. Thanks for watching.